Yes indeed, y'all. Yes indeed. Welcome to UDR Productions. Please like, subscribe, and share. It doesn't cost you nothing to subscribe. So we can keep bringing you guys all this good content from prayer to streets. UDR Productions. Let's go and let's get it. Once again, good evening. You listen to Being Poetically Correct with your host, MVP, Most Viable Paul, the Power Thane, a radical black Puerto Rican man of God from the Bronx when life started. Currently resigned on Bridgeport CT, folks. We're going to have a great time tonight. But before we get to tonight's topic and conversation, I want to introduce um, two amazing people that's here. I want to first introduce a newcomer, Serge. Give a shout out real quick. This is your boy Serge checking in, holding down for Bridgeport, Connecticut, baby. Let's get it. All right, for sure, for sure. And then... Without, without further ado, folks, I want to introduce an amazing good brother, an incredible, amazing, an amazingly incredible good person right here. DJ Terrible T in the house. What's up, baby boy? How you? Hey, just fortunate, blessed, glad to be here, man. Still be here, man. Absolutely, Still man. be healthy, and to everybody else out there, don't let your guards down. Stay healthy, man, because health is your greatest wealth. Absolutely, man. Just thank Don't get God. sick. Yeah, man. Just thank God that we're here. There's so many things going on in this world. And speaking of one of the things that's been on my mind, I want to share this and just see what you guys thought about this. And, Doug, I know we were um, sharing this earlier today, but a client of mine that I work with in case management had texted me saying, Rob, yo, M, did you hear about a baby that was eight months young was found in the garbage in New Haven? And it was found, and the baby was found by a maintenance worker who, who reported what happened, and they had locked up the mother. She got incarcerated right now. Now, I'm not a biological parent, but I'm a father to fatherless kids because this is a father's generation. And one of the things I've always instilled is value, esteem, confidence, most of all, love, and just being an asset. And I've said this before, and I said this again no child is ever asked to be born. And it just, it saddens me when I see parents being reckless, having unprotected sex and not know what to do or making careless decisions and being selfish and instead of just stepping up to the plate and taking ownership to raise that child to be the best that he or she needs to be, they're going to stoop to that level of tossing in the trash. I find it flagrant, I find it disrespectful, and it's unacceptable. So I wanted to hear from your guys' perspective as parents or as folks that, that has like, you know, grandkids, what are your thoughts when you hear something like this, magnitude? What are your thoughts about that? So, go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, my heart goes out, you know, to that child that was found in the, in the, in the garbage, the trash can, you know. It's hard to hear news, news like this because we're going through such a rough time, uh, you know, in this world that for that to occur during this time, you know, it's just, it, it, it melts my heart, man. And I felt, you know, as a parent, I love my kid. You know, I want the best for my kid and, you know, you know, may God help that person and, and may God, you know, continue to, to, to look over those fortunate kids that haven't been going through that. Uh, I just believe that, you know, it's just cold hearted, you know, it's tough and, you know, Whatever, um, whatever, whatever she gets uh, penalized for, you know, whatever she's being accused for, you know, it's 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 tough, man. You know, she's gonna deal with it, and you know, may 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 God be with her soul, man. T, what you think about it? So the baby is deceased. Well, the baby is alive. Oh, okay. but the hands is burned. Hands are burned. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Uh, as a parent myself, um, and a grandparent, parent six times, a grandparent five times, um, there's so many options that people have when it comes to children maybe that they don't want. Um, but I also recognize as this COVID-19 has hit, it's been such a rise in the 
I would say, not resurgence, but the, let's call it the hidden mental health issues in the community. There are a lot of people who ain't playing with a full deck. There are a lot of people who are not plugged all the way into the wall. Uh, as, as one of my old uh, supervisors would say, some people are just a couple of french fries short of a Happy Meal, you know what I mean? They just, they're not there. And, <laughs> and, and I'm not making excuses um, uh, because, like you said, it's unacceptable. We're not here to make excuses. I've learned through years, uh, and particularly by certain teachers, to don't look and blame, try to see and understand how that could happen. And the only thing I can attribute it to is, and again, not making, uh, as we call, excuses, uh, some serious mental, deep-rooted uh, mental health issues. Yeah, you have to be, be sick to, to, to do something like that. Sick in the head too. A mother, for one, is not going to do any harm to the child that she carried. I mean, that baby grew, developed in her in her womb. She whether she pushed it out or that she had it by C-section. Whatever, it still came, and there's a certain connection that a mother naturally is supposed to have with her child. child. Right. It's supposed to be an instant connection, you would yeah. think, that's from within. You know, it's interesting because I work in the field of case management, and I'm dealing with folks that have mental health disorders. We're, talking about, we're not talking about, like, you know, um, something that's minute or something that's minor. We're talking about, like, schizophrenia. We're talking about anxiety, depression. We're talking about bipolar for example and to your point there's a lot of mental health disorders and i don't even think it's even hidden i think it's more out there now at least because where i'm at bridgeport it's more out there now what it comes down to is what where does it come from as far as being deeply rooted we know it's deeply rooted as far as like you know from past traumatic experiences in history for me it's about addressing it and continue to facilitate and figure out how to address these mental health disorders because to your point, you mentioned about how it, it, it has so much impact and it devastates to where when you have a, a parent to have that mindset, which I believe is so evil in the spirit, like in your soul, to do that, listen, it's heartbreaking for me. And I'm not even a parent biologically, but I'm a father to fatherless kids because I worked with the youth for over two decades and I've seen kids who came from that kind of environment. And I said, you know what? God has called me for a purpose to salvage and maximize their full potential. I'm like, you don't belong in the garbage. You belong as far as one of the greatest. One of the greatest. And being an asset, not a liability. And I was, I'm out there in the streets evangelizing. I'm out there talking to young people, saying that, you know what? You don't have to be what you despise, but what? Do you want to be when it's all said and done? What, what kind of legacy you want to leave behind? And they talk about how their parents had mental health disorders. They talk about being abused, being neglected in some way. But I said, do you let that define who you are? Do you going to let your past dictate your future? And they're like, you know what? No. But they're crying out for help. And that during that time that I've been with them, I'm showing them opportunities. I'm showing them that there's a way. And I must tell you, over 100 kids that I got from out here in Bridgeport, they were to the job court and they're making it. Making a name for themselves. Being an asinine liability. So that brings me joy. To know what? Don't let your past define who you are. Don't let them try to define you. It's how you deal with those trials that define who you really are. Yeah, and that's true. You got to set a positive example and let them know that, you know, it's like the shirt, the sweatshirt that I'm wearing, a product of my environment. You know what I'm saying? Like, what does that mean to you as far as, like, you know, the, um, the message on your sweatshirt? On your hoodie, excuse me. Yeah, it's like, <clears throat> You got to make the best out of your environment, you know, because you're your own product. You got to market yourself to the best of your ability, regardless of what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You could be rich or you could be homeless if you don't have that hunger and that motivation to get through your own obstacles around you. Then if you make it, you know, you're going to be like, yeah, my environment ain't can't, can't stop me, you know, I'm my own product. You know, I'm gonna make it and I'm gonna survive to do what I gotta do, you know? Yeah, absolutely. That's my message right there. No, I feel that. I think that a lot of what we had to endure is a testimony to inspire others that you know what, there is hope. 
that there is a chance, that there is light at the end of the tunnel, and there's never excuses. One of the things that I'm seeing nowadays that I don't like is that I'm seeing a lot of transgressions being committed. And folks are not taking ownership of what they've done wrong while looking for excuses and justification. You don't justify wrong. You did it, you said it, and it's not right, own it. Learn from the wise and be wiser. That's how you mature. That's how you become more insightfully aware of what's going on in your immediate surrounding. And to what you were saying before, Serge, about how I need to step out of that comfort zone. I don't want to be a product of my environment because you know what? I've seen the aftermath of how devastating it could be. So let's talk about that point in terms of what, how important it is for folks to see beyond three blocks, especially the youth. Right now, they just lost and disconnected. Indeed. How Indeed. important it is for you guys to say, you know Indeed. what, man, we need to show them and bridge that gap. You know what, there's more to life than two blocks of your neighborhood. You want to touch that? Okay, well, one of the things I've always been a strong advocate of is the local community centers, local churches, mosques, synagogues, whatever, whatever organizations, YMC, Boys and Girls Club, they need to have and sponsor trips to take these kids places to show them things they would have never seen off that block. That's one way we could um, invest in our youth and in the future because it's hard for, for kids to see something they've never seen. And a lot of their imagination has been so tainted and so distorted because of that. In, in particular, like I said, they think that, oh, well, I'm this way because of my environment. No, we're the way we are because we become the results of the choices we make. But we have to broaden those choices, to broaden those opportunities. We have to provide youth more opportunities to get out so-called the hood all the time and take them on these trips and they're not just sponsored through schools. I think we put too much on just the school system when the real school is home. You know, the real school system should be what you're teaching, what values, what morals, what ethics, what standards you hold. I was just talking to a person the other day about years ago, we were told, oh, just want you to graduate high school. And that was stuck in a kid's mind. I'm graduating high school. So when you graduated high school and you threw your cap up in the air and, and you just like, you just won the everything. Like you did it. I did it. And that's the lowest, that's one of the lowest standards we could give our children is to stop at high school. Now, don't get me wrong. Everybody's not college. It's, it's something went wrong. Every, everything's not, everybody's not college material. But there's got to be options, but there has to be options out there. Yeah, besides, and, the, yeah, options other than that, and you have vocational skill level people all throughout our community. We have electricians, we have plumbers, CNA. we have carpenters, we have stonemasons, we have technicians, we have IT people. I mean, there's things that, as a common unity, because you know, community is a nice little word that people like to use. But when I say, when you break down the word common unity, what do we have in common that we're unifying on? And if it's not to invest in the children, and they gotta, I, I don't know which one of y'all said it, you gotta lead by example. Yeah, you can't okay. see mommy and daddy and uncle and, and stuck in the TV all day, but you tell them to go to school, get, a, get a, get an education. See, a lot of times kids emulate what parents do. Yeah. So if you're not saying by example, how's the child going to respect you? That's like trying to tell a child, you know, don't curse, but you're cursing up the storm. Right. They're not going to respect you. I know I wouldn't. No. You mentioned about, um, I, there was a word that I mentioned the last time. It was, a, it was, it was the word community. Just a word within that word community. Unity. Yeah. We got to be unified to bring about options to help young people be creative. I think a lot of time in this earth, like creativity has been taken away from kids because they've been sitting at home just relying on video games or just sitting at home watching the TV, then the TV just, you know, raise you as per se. No, you have to get out there and show that there's a way. When I was recruiting kids to go to Job Corp, to your point, they focus a lot of vocational training from CNAs to carpentry to masonry to um, construction to um, CMA, I mean, data, um, data analysis to um, IT. The kids love the whole aspect of getting their hands on in terms of like working hands on for like, you know, learn the trade and figuring out how can I use this platform to solidify a more promising future. 
I know for a lot of young people, and I'm a living witness to that, God is my witness, is that I've seen kids who came from the gutter in Bridgeport, for example, and went to the job corps and made a name for themselves by becoming, you know, a, 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 a scholarship opportunity for kids to go back to college. I've seen kids who took the opportunity of finishing job corps and the advanced training of that trade or another trade that opened up their eyes. I've seen them, you know, have full-time jobs. I've seen kids relocated from where it, from where it was at before to another city that has more grandeur in terms of opportunities to grow and to flow. So I've seen that and it does work. And what it comes down to is you cannot be a blind eye to what's out there. You can't be a muted mouth to not say something when you know it's not right. It's about really speaking up and speaking out and bring about solutions. A lot of times what I've seen is there's too much discussions, too much talking. And just going around the round table, just talking and talking repeatedly. No, what is the solution? Let's keep figuring out solutions to help solidify how do we make sure that kids don't become a school to prison popular statistic. What do you guys say to that? Uh, my perspective is that, you know, most of the times, like like my brother said, he said, you know, that they just want to make someone go through the minimum, which is, you know, high school. You know, I graduated high school. I, der I was determined to graduate high school because my old siblings dropped out. My parents came to this country for me to have a better life. You know, so I stuck it out. I went to, you know, I made it through through a high school, and I went on to college. I got my associates. I was the first one to graduate with my associates. That's dope. And I was like, you know what? My dad is working in the kitchen full time. So I was like, you know what? I want to do. I want to do better. I want to make sure that my daughter knows that you know, school is the way. So I graduated Kusatonic. I went on to Southern and graduated with my bachelor's degree in, uh, bachelor in uh, graphic design. So it's like, you know, most of the times, a lot of people get caught up in the mindset like, I don't need school, you know. They've been brainwashed with stupidity and yeah. lies. Yeah. Let me ask you this question, because see, T and I, we're from the old school. And it's not, and it's not, and it's not a nice. Just, just see, just listen to where I'm going with this. We're from the old school, so we have a perspective on what goes on because we live life, you know, through various experience. We know what we're going to say in terms of how to connect, right? But sometimes you might have those young people, as per se, they might say, "Oh man, they too old. They out there as far as you know, a different era." You just graduated from high school recently, a few years ago, right? Yeah. You just graduated from college. So, what does it mean to you as a young man? that's in this millennials as per se, what does it mean to you to say, you know what, guys, you don't have, you know, you can do something with your life, hearing it from a young person's perspective. Not, not saying we, we ain't old, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, we're young at heart. But I'm saying as far as your age, where you are, what are you accomplishing right now? Talk about to you, what does it mean to tell the young viewers out there, look, you can still make a name for yourself. Don't get caught up into this whole idea of being disrespectful to our parents or being disrespectful to authority where, they think we know more, but they don't know more. So what does it mean to you to like really infuse that confidence and infuse, and infusing that hope to them? Yeah, um, you know, sometimes like <clears throat> when you go through certain stuff in life, you know, it destroys your confidence. But at the end of the day, once you weather the storm, that's going to make you a better person. You know, so you have to stay strong, you have to stay positive. Right. And for my age, you know, speaking to the young audience out there, you know, it's not too late, right. you know. Regardless of what you're going through, you know, you just have to get up on your feet and tell yourself that, you know, you got to motivate yourself. You got to get through. Yep. You got to make it happen because nobody else is going to make it happen for you. Right. You know, all the success that I've had in, in my career you know since I've been going to school and, and doing my own thing you know it's because I'm hungry you know you got to stay hungry man you gotta have that hunger that ambition yeah. that that drive you know like I'm gonna share this and you know definitely I want you to jump on this too I never forgot where I came from I always said this before that you know you don't know where you're going unless you know where you've been and I know where I've been from the Bronx What's been told to me, by the time you hit a certain age, you're not going to make it. But God's like, nah, that's not happening. Not on my time, not on my watch. 
To be from here to get to here, it's a blessing. But I never forgot the in between, the struggles, the hardship. But the hardships that I went through, the violences that I had to endure, that I had to overcome, it made me who I am today. It made me who I am today. So even though I'm here, I never forgot where it started here. And just the in-betweens, the transition, the, the, um, the in-betweens, the whole motion, just going through different trials every day. I never forgot where I came from and I'm so thankful because you know what? There's a lot of us right now that can't even speak about that because they dead. Right now, as I'm speaking, there's been an uptick of senseless violence and killings. That's been close to home for me. I know it hit close to home to you. I don't know if, I don't know if you have gone through that situation. For yeah, yourself. definitely. Oh, you have? Yeah. So let's yeah, speak definitely. about what does it mean to like really infuse the love, the faith, the hope to really these senseless violences that we're seeing right now. Because it's been an uptick. And it's like disturbing because it's the alarming rate of how much it has gotten. Like just the, it's just so disturbingly alarming. As far as these homicides, these killings, and then when you think about like like the root of it for what the problem is, it's over nuts, it's over nothing, it's nonsense, it's minute, it's senseless. So what do you guys say about that in terms of really understanding what it means to be overcomers, to persevere, and to say, you know what, man, we don't have to become what we despise. We don't need to become a part of the statistic, but let's be about solutions. Let's continue to infuse the aspect of love and unity. T, give me from your standpoint, what do you think about that? Like what is your perspective? Well, you spoke about all what you've been through and all of us have gone through things and right. going to continue to go through things. There's a phrase that says pressure bursts pipes, but pressure also creates diamonds. So it's on a person's perspective on how they're going to approach the pressure. And a lot of people, when they get pressured, we have this, and it's, it's normal, it's human, we become angry because the root behind all violence is anger. But the anger gets, it's undisciplined, it's out of control, it becomes rage. And then once it becomes rage, there's the violence. So we gotta get back to the root of controlling, not stopping it, because being angry is normal. It's, it's like- I mean, that's a right, reaction, that's, a, right, right, right. that's an emotion. But we, we have to, uh, it's like I, I like to use, as, from an from electrician standpoint of view, you have a, a a box, your fuse box. Right. All this power is coming into this, like, and particularly this building. Right. And there's circuits and there's circuit breakers. Yeah. There's, there's safety measures put in place so that if it's overloaded, it's going to trip the tri trip that fuse, but ain't going to be no fire. And the human being, we don't practice that. We don't, yeah. we don't do enough of putting our fuse breakers in there because, yeah, yeah. and one of those fuse breakers is, I use this many times. You have to use your intelligence, I before you E, not E before I. We get too emotional and we don't know how to walk away because we're driven more so by ego once we become angry. Who you think you do, I'm gonna show you this. And then it becomes personal. We gotta get back to the principles of preserving life. And that one of the greatest principles you could ever live under is humility. I don't care how tough you are. I don't care which who you can beat up and how who you can knock out and how many guns you got. Humility. Yeah. And but humility becomes this thing. If you watch too much TV, you, you're considered soft. Right. But no, humility is a life preserver. It is. <laughs> you know what I mean, no, it's, it's true though. You're right. It's, it's, it is. You're right. Because but they rather go into the hostile. Because there's a misconception of right. that that being um, having dignity being humble, mm -hmm. having humility, you're, you're being labeled soft according to who? Those that don't understand right. what that even means. Right. But meanwhile, you got two dudes at war fighting over something that's 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 insensible and you're both and you both died from that. Which that could have been nipped in the butt or it could have been hashed out prior to. So having humility doesn't make you weak. It mm -hmm. makes you more humble. Having dignity doesn't make you soft. It makes you more respectful. It makes you more aware. It gives you that keen sense as far as being um, cognizant of what's around you and how you conduct yourself. Because to your point, it, it don't make any sense to have a situation where, because you can agree to disagree mm -hmm. and continue to progress. But right. what I've seen today, and I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but I've seen this, is that when I've seen people, it's easy to get along when you agree. Everybody's all happy, everybody's all 
emotion as far as that love, that peace, it's easy. But what happens when you disagree? Now there's name calling, now there's beast. For what? I've seen it just For in sports. What? People get all hyped up over a saying. sports team. For what though, man? Like, like, like what you stand for might be different from mine and vice versa, but it's cool. It doesn't mean that we undermine, and I've seen a lot of this, that people have undermined each other because you have a different point of view or different stance right. about certain topics. You can have a different point of view without being pathologized or being name called. What do you think to that? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think everyone's entitled to their own opinion, their own thoughts. You know, and, and it's it's tough sometimes, like you said. You know, sports is the biggest com the biggest competition Going between up, yeah. human beings, mm -hmm. and that is what drives us to, you know, to go against each other. You know. But do you realize that when it comes to sports, these athletes and all these um, executives, and you have um, general managers, they pay, they they're moving on their life. They don't care about us going to war or having these arguments about the best player or argue about a team that you are entitled to what you stand for at the end of the day that's not putting money in my pocket you know what i'm saying i got a job to do yeah you know what i'm saying i got see i got i got playing sheets you know yeah. what i'm saying so to sit there and use sports to divide i think it's just pathetic and it's senseless and it's just sad and it's like you know what there's so much more than what's going on in the sports yeah. aspect of it listen there's a bigger picture we need to pay attention to yeah that's society today though you know it's like you know it's in the uh, social media, it's in the TV constantly, you know, they, they, you know, they're already debating on, you know, who's going to get more rings, LeBron or, or is he going to, you know, pass Jordan, you know, so that's the, that's like the kind of conversation that, you know, it's like. That's that barbershop tour. <laughs> that's barbershop tour. You're going to have those barbershop conversations, because a lot of that they talk about the barbershop, we talk about it still, yeah. but I've noticed there's been a difference of. The, the, the level that has gotten to as far as being exponentiated to where people are very hypersensitive. If I say good morning, you're upset. What are you pissed off at? I'm just saying good morning. I'm saying God bless you. What are you angry about? Like I had a friend of mine that told a girl because she was playing boy. He goes, yo, nice shot. You know, so you got a good game. She got angry. He's like, whoa, chill, sweetie, back up. Like, what are you angry about? Yeah. I'm just saying nice shot. Nice, good game. Like, well, get, 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 that's, get, that's the point I'm making. Yeah. We got to yeah. get to the root. It's like when somebody's sick, they send you through a battery of tests. Right. They may have to take blood here, some samples here, and then they'll tell you, you got this or that. They can't, we can't look at each other and talk about we're healthy. It's what's inside the person. So you deep down say, what is fueling that person's anger? Why, and I, this, is another, this is a thing I've been teaching for many years. Anger is one letter away from danger. All you got to do is add the D and it's danger. So anytime you get to the point where you get angry, just remember, you cross that line, you could be in danger. So we got to somehow hone that energy, level it out where it's healthy anger, because it's all right to get angry. It's, a, it's, I mean, who, who it's all right who, who to be mad. Who don't get angry? No, who don't? I mean, I, mean, that's, I, think what it, I think what it comes down to, T, it's not so much of being angry, it's how you're challenging it and where you change right. it to. But that's what I'm saying. You yes. get to the root of that anger and then you find out, what am I really angry? And this is, this yeah. as we were talking earlier, yeah. talking about mental health issues. Yeah. Like people don't like, well remember, it's mental health. It didn't say mental unhealth. It should say that though. It but should, it, it should, should say, say that. Mental it, unhealth. It, it, we say it, mental it, health If issues. you think about it, it sounds like an oxymoron though. Mental health. I'm health. like, how's that healthy if someone has a mental issue? Yeah, no. But you're, <laughs> right, so, so mentally, you look at people and you say, what makes a person <laughs> click? Like, like what makes right. you flip over? I do, me personally, yes, I don't get caught up in debating over who's better than who. I don't get involved in a sports talk. To me, that's a lot of good energy wasted on something that's an endless argument. Because people are just going to have their favorite team, their favorite player, and it ain't going to change. So they're all great to me. My question is people who argue and put that much energy in who's great. Ask yourself, how great can you be as a human being? How great can you be what as a brother? Like, what is your how purpose great in this can world? you be as a father? How great can you be as a brother? How great can you be as a friend? If the greatness is those those people who make it to that level, they put a lot of work into getting where they got. And we're, we're sitting there just talking about which one's better than other. But it, it's, <laughs> what can you me, bring? Put it this way: What can but, you bring to the table yeah. that you, is unique as far as the individual that you are? You know, what, what, what do you bring to the table that's unique? I mean, 
we are all great in different ways. Right. And the thing is, is that you can be great without suppressing the other person. Right. You can be great along with you, along with you, and that's the that's how we need to be. Is you can be great and uplift others to be great. And yeah. see, and I agree with you that there's a lot of time that people are just focusing the energy in the wrong direction. You're putting a lot of energy and wasting it on something that has no bearing to you. But let's talk about how great can we be as far as young men, of, as far as men of color, and how can we, you know, rewrite our history and create a better legacy. How can we be great and negate the stereotypes? That's greatness. Good is just say I'm here. Greatness has a way of separating itself. Saying, you know what? It's the it's the little things that you do, the intangibles. It's your overall body of work. It's the work ethic that stands out from being good. To me, great separates from good. Mm -hmm. We need to get to that point as far as we could be great. And right. I believe that if we invest into each other's time and our gifts, the strengths, do you realize we can make so much noise and our voice can be heard so much louder rather than just trying to be selfish, trying to do everything on your own? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, um, it starts within yourself. You got to take that initiative, you know, to be in the community, set an example, and, you know, lead by example. I know it's tough because we got, we have so many, uh, you know, so much obstacles around us, you know, and it's tough, but, you know, I want to hear what my man T got to say. <laughs> well, I would say this, there's too much competition amongst us instead of us cooperating amongst us. We, we, we always trying to outdo the next person and outdress this one and outplay this one and outwrap this one and out. All right, can we take that energy and focus, and I, mean, I know we all have heard the saying. Of course. Um, we're a work in progress. And that's a real simple statement. But a lot of people are not working to progress. They'll just make the statement, well, I'm a work in the progress. Body of being yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just a work in progress. And you know, <laughs> but we're all a work in progress, yeah. but you have to work to progress. And most of the work is not exterior, it's interior. It's what's inside you, because whatever's inside you is gonna come out. If you're angry, if you're furious, if you're jealous, if you're hateful, if you got rape, it's gonna come out. If you about peace, love, unity, harmony, a, a consciousness in the community, you, it'll come out because it'll, it'll show by your life. You live it. This is something, like you said, a lot of people just talk it. They talk a talk. I'm but done you, talking. You yeah, didn't know that. You, we got we to gotta work it. You know, I've been doing a lot of things in the community for many, many years. And all the names that I've been given, I didn't give it to myself. Other people said it. Yeah. So I don't, you don't validate your works. People that you've seen you work through the years will say, that brother MVP, or that brother Surge, Surge, Surge. or that brother, you know, he, I seen him and he's been doing this. You don't go out beating yourself on the you chest. You never boast yourself. Yeah, you, it's not about, you know, I have this thing about throwing dirt. You were right. good at throwing dirt at people. But you know, every, the more dirt you throw at per people, the more dirt you got in your hand. And the wetter you try to make it, the more mud you in now. Right. So what is it um, for me to be good? I got to throw dirt on you. Why? Why do I have to make throw dirt at anybody? Why not just clean up my act and in the meantime, do everything I can to help clean each other up? And I'm going to use this one example. <laughs> I got to use this. People talk about community, community, community this. Oh, cool. I think I, know where you, I think I know where you're going to go with it, but go ahead. No, I don't think you know where it is. No, I think so. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. There's a bodega in, in, the, in the neighborhood at where I live at, at the corner, here in Bridgeport. Okay. I went to the owner and I said, uh, you got a rake? He didn't have a rake. And he's like, what do you mean? I said, there's a whole lot of garbage around the store. It looks horrible. I went and bought a rake from a little rummage sale, whatever, yeah. for like five bucks. Yeah. And now what I do, every time I see the garbage kind of pile up, and because people just throw stuff, I mean, they, sure. Bridgeport is sad with uh, some of the stuff I see in some of these areas. They just throw garbage out, food, and I rake everything up, put it in the garbage, and I don't do it because I'm doing it to get some money. I'm doing it because I have family in that neighborhood. We're in that neighborhood, so if you first got to show some sense of pride and dignity in your environment. Is he, so I'm going to 
lead by example. So they're probably saying, who's this guy? And they definitely know I ain't no crackhead, so let's get that out the way. <laughs> right. I ain't no dust head, none of that. It's like, wait a minute, what's this guy? Ain't that? But again, it's a necessity because you know what? The younger kids will see it now. Some of the older people look at you go, okay, wow, all right. And you know what? Now certain people are starting to do it. So you got to be a trailblazer, trend center, not go along just to hang out to be along. And, 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 you know, and that's where real leadership, leaders are made. They're not, I mean, they're not made, they're born. So it's either in you or it's not in you. And you can take the funk but for so long before somebody's going to call you out on it. And it's just a matter of time. And here's what yeah. I say to that. The reason I say I think I know where he's going with that, and I think I'm taking it from a bigger aspect of it too, is that people hear people say that, let's go out into other communities and clean up their messes. Time out. No. You're not cleaning up your own mess. Mm -hmm. If you're not cleaning up your own mess, how are you going to clean up somebody else's mess? It's like this whole movement that you're seeing. Oh, there's a lot of injustice out there. We need to go out there and fix it. No. Fix what's going on here. Mm -hmm. Fix what's going on here. When you fix what's going on in here, now you can start expanding. Now you can walk and move and go and dress other areas. But until, to your point, think about that. How are you going to sit there and say, I'm going to clean somebody else's trash and messes, but I still see garbage in my own neighborhood? And like I said, if you're not saying by example, because nowadays, people are quick to say, right? They can quick to convey. The watchers is watching what you're doing, what you're saying, what you're conveying, what you're demonstrating. So if you're, you better be about it. Don't talk about it, but you better be about it. Yeah, that's true, man. You know, I agree with my man T. You know, I see a lot. I live in Bridgeport, and I see a lot of people just littering. And I'm like, oh, come on. It's a garbage can right there. You know, and my, I, don't, I don't own the property where I live at. But I like to maintain it clean, you know, because I live there, right? You know, you so, live that's this your neighborhood. Yeah, and you know, I just wish a lot of people in Bridgeport would be a lot more cleaner. Cause it's like everywhere you go in Bridgeport, you see the sewers piled up with garbage, right. and I'm like, yo, that's sad, man. So you know, I think you know the best thing you can do is take action. Take action. When they see you're doing that, they yeah. gonna, he was saying it earlier. Yeah. If you start demonstrating, say, okay, I see a pile of garbage here. Let me just take gloves, pick it up. Man, this person really cares about the community. Oh, I see you got the fingers there. I hear that, B. So listen, I just want to say one quick thought, and then we're going to close this out. But I'll say this. When you see something wrong, like let's say if you, just, if you see garbage out on the street, be the example. Don't wait on somebody to say it. You do it. God gave you that ability. Do it. Yeah. Let go clean up. Let me wear my mask, wear my gloves. And when they start seeing you taking seriously to clean up your own neighborhood or clean the surroundings, then they're going to take steps forward to do yeah. so. But listen, on that note, because it's almost time, folks, I just want to say humbly, subscribe to UDR Productions Go Love Team. Thank you guys for listening to Being Politically Correct with your host MVP. Shout out to Sir. Shout out to the guest of the night, which is Terrible T. Listen, God bless you guys. We love you guys. Stay strong. Stay warm. We're going to go out again to next time. Out. Hey. Yes indeed, y'all. Yes indeed. Welcome to UDR Productions. Please like, subscribe, and share. It doesn't cost you nothing to subscribe. So we can keep bringing you guys all this good content from prayer to streets. UDR Productions. Let's go and let's get it.